Welcome to our lecture online. So how do we get this augmented matrix, which represents this system of linear equations in three variables, how do we change it from that form into this form? Because once we have it in this form, we can easily determine x, y, and z. Well, we do that by adding rows together, by moving rows around, by sometimes multiplying a row by some number and then adding it to another row. So you'll see how that works. So first of all, remember, we started in the upper left corner, and since that's already a 1, we don't have to make that a 1. So we're good to go there. The next thing we want to do is get rid of this 5 and this 3. We want to turn the 5 into a 0. We want to turn the 3 into a 0. So we work on the first column first. So how do we take the 5 and turn that into a 0? We don't care what happens to the other numbers. We just care about that. We want that to be a 0. So the way to do that this is, of course, row 1, this is row 2, and this is row 3. So what we're going to do is we're going to take row 2 and replace it. That's what this arrow means. We're going to take row 2 and replace it by the following. We take the negative of this number, negative 5, multiply that times row 1. That's the row that has the 1 in it, and that's why it's easy to use that. So we're going to take negative 5 times row 1 and add it to row 2. So notice what happens when I do that here. If I multiply this row by negative 5, that means I'm going to take each number and multiply it times the negative 5. But on the first one, it's important because negative 5 times 1 is negative 5. And then if I add that to row 2, which is a 5, negative 5 plus 5 is 0, and that turns into a 0. Of course, all these other numbers will change, but we'll show you how to do that. And then we do the same technique for the third row. We're going to take the third row and replace it by the negative of this number, which is negative 3, times, you guessed it, row 1 again, because that's the row that has the 1 in it, row 1, and add it to row 3. When I do that, the 3 will become a 0. Yes, all these other numbers will change, but I don't care what they change to, as long as I end up with a 1, 0, 0, which is what I want. And that's what we're going to do. So when we do that, we get the following matrix. Okay, the first row doesn't change because I'm not doing anything to row number one. So that become that stays at one, negative one, four, and nine. But now the second row. So negative five times one is negative five plus five, that gives me zero. Now negative five times negative one is plus five, added to three gives me eight. Negative five times four is negative twenty plus negative 6 is negative 26, and negative 4 times, oh, sorry, negative 5, negative 5 times 9 is minus 45, plus 3 is minus 42. Make that a little bit longer like this. So notice the entire row 2 has changed, but more, more importantly, this has become a 0. So negative 5 times 1 is negative 5, added to 5 is 0. Negative 5 times the negative 1 is plus 5, plus 3 is 8. Negative 5 times 4 is minus 20, minus 6 is minus 26. Negative 5 times 9 is minus 45, plus 3 is minus 42. Now we do the same for the third row. Negative 3, negative 3 times row 1, negative 3 times 1 is negative 3, added to 3 gives me 0. Negative 3 times negative 1 is plus 3, added to 7 gives me 10. Negative 3 times 4 is negative 12, added to 4 is negative 8. And negative 3 times 9 is minus 27, minus 1 is minus 28. So there you go, I've accomplished the first column. I've made that look exactly like this, 1, 0, 0. So now, notice I don't care what this number is, that's a negative 1, I don't care about that, but I do care about this number. That number needs to become a 1. So how do I turn that into a 1? Well, I can simply multiply the entire row by 1 over 8, or divide the whole row by 8. So I'm going to take row 2 and replace it by 1 over 8 times row 2. Simply multiply the whole row by 1 over 8, or in essence, dividing it by 8. When we do that, we get the following result. Notice since I'm only changing the second row, the first row stays the same. 1, negative 1, 4, and then the line here with a 9. The third row stays the same. 
0, 10, negative 8, and negative 28. And then the second row becomes 0, because 0 divided by 8 is 8. 8 divided by 8 is 1. Negative 26 divided by 8. So I have negative 26 divided by 8. That's the same as negative 13 over 4. You can write it as simple as possible. So negative 13 over 4. And then here we have negative 42 divided by 8. So negative 42 divided by 8. That's the same as negative 21 divided by 4. Okay, negative 21 divided by 4. So I've accomplished this item right here. This had to be a 1. I now have that as a 1. Next, I want to take this 10 and turn it into a 0. So I need to get rid of this and turn it into a 0. How do I do that? Well, as follows. I take row 3 and replace it by the negative of this number, negative 10, times the row with the 1 in it, which is R2, row 2, and add it to row 3. So negative 10 times 1 is negative 10, add it to 10, I get 0. And that's what I'm trying to get. I want a 0 there. I know the rest is going to change, but I don't care what that changes to. All right, so that means that row 1 stays the same, 1, negative 1, 4, and a 9, I get a 0, a 1, a minus 13 over 4, a minus 21 over 4, but this row now becomes the following, I get 0, 10 divided by, let's say, what do I get? Because I get a negative 10 times 1 is negative 10, added to 10, I get 0. Negative 10 times minus 13 over 4, wow. So let me work that out on the side. Negative 10 times the negative 13 over 4 gives me a positive 130 divided by 4. And I'm going to add that to a negative 8. So that's minus 8. 130 divided by 4. So sometimes the calculator comes in handy. So 130 divided by 4, that is 32.5. So this is equal to 32.5 minus 8 which is equal to 24.5. So, negative 10 times this, added to this, gives me 24.5. And negative 10 times this, well, that gives me a positive 210 divided by 4, and then I'm going to add that to a negative 28, minus 28. So, what is that equal to? 210 divided by 4, that's 52.5, so 52.5 minus 28, that gives me a positive 24.5. Okay, 24.5. Almost there, because the last thing I need to do is this needs to become a 1. And how can I make this into a 1? I can take that whole row and simply divide it by... 24.5. So I'm going to do that next. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take row 3 and replace it by 1 over 24.5 times row 3. In other words, simply take the whole row and divide it by 24.3. Everything else stays the same. So I get 1, negative 1, 4, and a 9. The second row I get 0, I get 1, I get minus 13 over 4, and minus 21 over 4, and when I divide this whole row by 1, by 24.5, I get 0, 0, 1, and 1. Now, I am, I'm done because, well, almost done, at least this portion of it, because I have this whole thing look like this. 1's across the diagonal, 0's to the left, and so that's what I try to accomplish. Now, how do I read this? Remember that, where's my red pen? This is my x column, my y column, my z column. So this tells me that 1z is equal to 1. So simply by looking at that, I can simply realize here that z is equal to 1. So from that, I can tell. So here was z equal to f, z equals 1. I can conclude that z is equal to 1. And from the previous videos, since we're using the same system of linear equations, we remember that's the correct value. So now that I know that z is equal to 1, I can now go to the second equation, which tells me that 1 times y minus 13 over 4 times z 
is equal to minus 21 over 4. But I remember that z is equal to 1, so when I replace z by 1, I simply get y minus 13 over 4 is equal to minus 21 over 4. Which means I can say that y is equal to minus 21 over 4 plus 13 over 4. Minus 21 plus 13, well that looks like a minus 8 over 4 which is equal to minus 2, or y equals minus 2. And from memory, doing that a few videos ago, remember that was the correct value for y. Now the only thing left to do is to find out what x is equal to. So here I can tell by the top equation, I can say that 1x minus 1y plus 4z is equal to 9. And remember that z was equal to 1 and y was equal to negative 2. So x minus a negative 2 plus 4 times z, which is 1, is equal to 9. And if I simplify that, I get x plus 2 plus 4 equals 9. That's equal to 6. Subtract from both sides, I get x is equal to 3. And so there you go. The solution to that system of linear equations in three variables is x equals 3, y equals negative 2, z equals 1, and how do we get that? By taking, the, by taking our augmented matrix and transforming it into what we call the row echelon form with ones across diagonal, zeros on the left side, so we can easily read what these three equations are equal to and find the values for z, for y, and for x, and that is how it's done. Well, it's a lot of arithmetic. It's not hard, but again, very careful. You make one little mistake somewhere, and you don't get the right answer. And it's easy to make mistakes here. No question about it. Not a fraction. Yes. When it comes to fractions and decimals and all that, it's, yeah, you have to be very careful. You can carry it all around with you. <laughs> and do a little bit of math on the side. Yeah. So. But it's a beautiful method, isn't it? Well, if you're a computer. <laughs>